Um, Richard, uh, our prisons join the long list of things that simply aren't working in this country. What is going on? Why does nothing work anymore? Why can't we even keep dangerous terrorists in prison? It's got worse since you've been away, Piers. Yeah. And, I mean, this is nothing short, actually, of gross negligence. That's all it is. I mean, if you and I said, let's go and run a few prisons, I'm pretty sure the first thing we would do is to say, when vehicles come in and out, we should check them. The roof, inside and underneath. It is the most basic stuff. Mm. Here's the thing, though. It cannot be just this one individual on their own. There's CCTV everywhere. If you actually look at the, uh, the entrance and exit of that prison, there are two secure zones that vehicle will have gone through. There has to be, in my view... I mean, I've actually... I've involved. gone into some of these prisons to interview people or whatever, or to see people, and the levels of security you have to go through is absolutely mind-boggling yeah. to me, Isabel, that anyone could actually, in this day and age, get out of one of these things. Which is why I think it was absolutely an inside job. There will have been multiple people, I right. am sure, that's my instinct, assisting mm. this individual. And we know from the testimony of so many prison officers and uh, other sources that there is a huge amount of corruption in our prisons, a huge amount of drugs and bribery, and all sorts will have gone on to... But do you feel, do you feel like I do, that it is indicative of a wider malaise in the country about 100%, almost everything? 100%. Everywhere I go now, people say, what is wrong no, with nothing, this country? Nothing is working. We talk about this every day, yeah. don't we? And every day you see more and more examples, whether it's the collapsing schools, right. bits of the NHS not working, you get on a train, inevitably it's late, you ring a call centre, no-one answers, cos... Can't see a doctor, you can't do this, you can't do that. there's a high volume of calls, nothing works. And, Paula, the problem is, as always, it's the people with the least amount of money and ability to get through all this cost of living crisis and so on who suffer the most, right? Absolutely. And uh, you see that frustration spilling out onto the street. You see it in relation to you thinking that it's OK to arrange a raid on JD Sports or wherever it is. You see um, uh, protesters, but uh, members of the public, attacking protesters mm. because they don't feel that the police are acting in their best interests um, and allowing them to get on with their daily work. You see it in relation to what's happening to the ULES cameras and attacks on ULES cameras because but you also see it. You also see it in what's happening with the NHS, which I'm a massive fan of, and I've had good reason to be a massive fan of over many decades with family and friends and so on, uh, and particularly Great Ormond Street, where I had a cousin who was a, a consultant neurologist there for the for kids for many years and brilliant. Um, but the, in the middle of all this, you read a story, the advice for staff at Great Ormond Street Hospital urges them to stop using gendered language in conversation, suggests the wrong pronouns can make people feel disrespected, invalidated, dismissed, triggered, alienated, or often all of these things. And they've stopped people to use words like boy or girl or man or woman. And I'm sorry, uh, Richard, I, how are they finding the time... Exactly. Right. This is the point. To do this stuff. But secondly, where are the rights... I'm going to say this again. Where are the rights of people like me who would like to be called a man? Or Isabel, who I suspect would like to be called a woman when she goes to a hospital? Or a boy or a girl? Where are the rights of the vast majority of people to carry on being called what they damn well want to be called? I just want people in the hospitals doctors and nurses, to be focusing on looking after the patients. Right. Nothing else. It's the time and energy, not just the money, the resource that's wasted and on the producing all this And the bowing is about this, this woke mentality that everything has to now be inclusive, even if, in the process, it excludes the majority of people from what they want. And actually, Richard, you know, the truth is that the doctors and nurses, the healthcare professionals, actually also want what you want. There's of course! There's nothing that exasperates them more than these endless men. Have you ever met a doctor who wants to round. use gender-neutral no, language? Not it's not absolute claptrap. Paula, I'm coming to you last because I know what's going to happen. <laughs> you're going to launch a spirited, ludicrous defence. <laughs> and I'm the going to be right, <laughs> and you're all going to agree Go with on, me then. because yeah. you know I'm right. This, and I am disappointed in you all, is actually a good news story. Why? Why? It's a good news story Why? because it's people being respectful to people. Really? And you say, what about the rights of, of, of yes. you, Pierce, to be called a man? Who said you weren't going to be called a man? If I go man? to the Great Ormond Street, they won't call me a man. Well, I, as I understand it, the guidelines are that you will be asked mm. how you prefer to be referenced mm. as, you will then explain how you prefer but to be referenced... how can we be with And all... then you will be referenced. But when the there's way. a war... Aren't you happy with that, Piers? Can you imagine going you to happy? the... Can you imagine going to Ukraine right now and saying to those people... Do you feel disrespected, invalidated, dismissed, triggered, alienated, or all of those things by the wrong pronoun? 
Why did do you, you think we've lost our, our, our perspective on reality of what it feels like to actually be oppressed? It's not about being called the wrong pronoun. It's about being bombed by Russian barbarians. That is oppression. This is nonsense. I think that's a poor argument because we're not equating uh, the NHS... I just did. Uh, we're not equating what the NHS are attempting to do to make certain people feel better with but the, the, with the horror... Job is not making the people feel better in that. This whole pronoun Ukraine. thing is utterly is ridiculous. Absurd. Because the truth is... For you... The truth is, no, if I decide... If I else? decide... It's a bit like the number of letters now, the LGBTQ... Do you know the rest of what it? What are no? they all? Two Q plus a, something, blah, blah, blah. something, right? Nobody knows. It's all complete nonsense. Complete so nonsense. I, I understand that there are even members of the LGBTQ who don't plus, know themselves uh, community. You forgot who, two plus. Who, who would who would agree with you? Yes. And so I can understand that sometimes, in terms of marketing, branding, getting a message out there, people get it wrong. Just, but, but, Paula, that, but that isn't Paula, a reason to it's suggest not a we don't need to do the that. The quality of the service and outcomes of the NHS are declining by are the month because they're wasting time there are people at Great Ormond, on this nonsense. People at Great Ormond Street who are having to come up... Know that that's having to come up with we this are kind not of struggling. Our NHS is not struggling because there are people out there it who is the care about the how you I want, I want Great Ormond Street staff to do what they've always done so brilliantly and become world leaders in, which is take care of sick kids. Yeah. I don't want them worrying or fretting well, about Rishi whether Sunak somebody is a they them. After it them. is bullshit. Anyway, but... let me just turn to something else which is bullshit, which is <laughs> a, a there's something doing the rounds online. It's probably an old one, I don't know, but it's fun. It's a it's about the perfect tea. It's a meme about the perfect tea. Somebody has come up here uh, with a, a, a sort of grit, and I think we've got it here. If we can show the grit. So they reckon that uh, E3 right, is the perfect example of the perfect colour tea. I think that is overstewed. I am more of a C4. I think that is the perfect colour. And it has to be Yorkshire Gold, obviously, but that is... It's four... It's four... No, C. No. D Sorry, no. Piers. Isabel? D2. 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 Yeah. Isabel. That's Stronger just horrible. No, that's it. C5. Can we see it again? Can we see it again? It's, it's got to be It's got to Keep be it up C5. there. You've got to see it all the time. Sorry, Stronger we can't take it down. Oh, yeah. No, no, way, way too no. weak. Your C5. C5. Yeah, strong, C5. strong and robust. No, let's see, that's overstewed. Yeah, that's <laughs> strong. Well, I obviously drink off. green tea, Piers, yeah. but if I was... If you had it with milk... If I had to have it with... Well, you don't have green tea with milk, but... I know what you'd be. You'd be pathetically... I was just going to say, why don't you guess what I'd be? Um, you be, put it back. A1. Put it back a moment. <laughs> put it back. <laughs> yeah, you would be A1. I think, I think A1. And then you say, but the trouble with that is, it's racist. Oh, <laughs> I think you'll find I'd probably be a C5. My, yeah, my sister in law. Yeah, you agree with me my, most my of the time. My sister in law's from no, Hartley Ball. She'd make a C5. I'm a world expert on tea making. I've actually taught Americans how to, how to make it, and it's C4. Anyway, it's a good debate. Uh, thank you, Pat. Good to see you. I'm glad we all reached a position of totally disagreeing. As always, always more fun that way.